One last thing I want to touch on with our field of view. Let me put the box in here and move the box out in front of the camera. Translate the box to negative 3 on the z-axis. And let's come back down to the side view of the camera again. Maybe come in here a little bit. And that's probably good. Let me draw. I'm going to make a wild guess what our field of view is. This, this looks like a good field of view. Remember, we with uh, roughly 60, we didn't get much on the top and much on the bottom when we do the projection and look at it in 2D. There's not much up here, and there's not much at the bottom. So we'll go back to this. Not much at the top, not much at the bottom. My best guess, this is our field of view I shall label theta. Now, let's just watch... As I grab this projection slider and bring this in, there's something I've been, igno I've been ignoring. Uh, I haven't been stressing, but but I'm sure you've noticed it by now. Let me bring this in, bring this in. Notice what happens to the box from this point of view as we come in. First of all, recall, I don't have the camera drawing anymore. As soon as we go into that perspective projection, the camera's gone. We've determined what the camera's looking at. We're simply trying to take this scene and smash it to two dimensions with some depth. But you notice how the front of the box gets larger while the back of the box does not. Okay, you know, it's almost like the opposite of what I've drawn here. I've drawn this nice field of view out here. And if I had a box that was shaped like this field of view that I've drawn here, say we had a box in the scene shaped like this, what we would witness is the front of the box would get larger, the back of the box would get smaller, and then they'd end up looking like a regular box. If I had some skewed up box, let me try to stress this a little bit more. If I had a skewed up, I guess it's not a box, if it's more like a trapezoidal kind of box, but I can't say box because it's not perfectly square. But if I did have something in the scene that looked like this, and then I grabbed the slider and moved it this way, then this object would actually turn into looking like a box like so. Anyway, let me grab the slider and let's look at our regular box right here. Grab the slider, bring it in, bring it in. You can see that we have the the same effect as what I just described, but instead of having some trapezoidal shape turn into a box, we have a box turn into a trapezoidal shape. And the whole reason why that does that is because things that are closer to the camera take up more surface area than things that are far away from the camera. Okay, I've, oops, I've described that several times. So things that are far away appear smaller and things that are closer to the camera appear larger. And if you really want to understand how the math for this works, go watch the Game Engine Programming playlist. But just for this video and what we're doing in the graphics videos, I'm not too stressed about that. Let's go back to our non-projected space, get our camera back in the scene. Let me come back down to the side as level as possible and make another guess at at drawing the field of view lines. I'll go thin and something like this, something like this. And what's happening? What's happening? We have this pinhole camera here where we look here and our field of view goes like this. But when we do the perspective projection, that is, bring the box in like so to projected space, what really happens is these field of view lines end up going parallel. We essentially bend these lines or rotate these lines so this goes up this goes down so what we're left with is a field of view like this same thing here this is going to go down this is going to go up and our field of view goes like that so our projected space you notice i left a little gap at the top of the box a little gap at the bottom of the box which is exactly what we see when i say fix the camera to the eye position we have this gap at the top, and there's some at the bottom, though you can barely see it in the recording. There's about the same amount of gap, and same thing on the side, simply because of how I position the cube. But that doesn't really matter. What I'm getting at here is the perspective projection warps this three-dimensional space, so instead of being this nice angled field of view, it takes it and makes it parallel So for our perspective projection, our two-dimensional scene. Anyway... That's important because we're rendering two-dimensional screens. We've talked about that several times. But I just want to give you an idea of what the perspective projection is doing and why our box squishes the way it does. Things that are close to the camera get large, larger, and things that are far away get smaller.